Hello, I'm Carl. I work uh, on the IDE team here at RStudio, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about how to use uh, Jupyter with RStudio Server Pro. So I'm going to talk about, you know, why would you want to do this, how do you set it up, how do you administer it, and I'll show you a brief little demo of it. <clears throat> so to start, some of you may be wondering, why are we doing this? So, you know, R isn't going anywhere. We, we very strongly believe in, in R, but as a company, we're very... Uh, much invested in making the R ecosystem as great as it can be. And at the same time, we're committed to supporting the open source data science ecosystem as a whole, regardless of language choice. So, you know, that said, R and Python are not rivals. Um, they're both great tools for data science, and we believe strongly in both of them. Um, and, you know, R is better for some things than others, and Python's better for other things. Um, so, you know, combining them will provide us the best of both worlds and, and give everyone what they need to do their data science effectively. Uh, so, you know, I barely scratch a surface on, you know, our, our aim as a company to, you know, kind of combine Python and R and, you know, provide you the best tools that you need to do your job. Uh, but uh, on our website, we have an R and Python love story that I highly recommend you to read. Uh, as it's, it's, it's very good and goes into more depth about, you know, where we're going as a company. You can read that on rstudio.com. So why use Jupyter specifically? Jupyter is well known in the Python community, and it provides a lot of tooling for working with various versions of Python seamlessly. It also provides Jupyter notebooks, which uh, many of you may know are great ways of organizing and visualizing data, similar to our markdown documents, but it currently provide better Python integration. So why would you want to use Jupyter from RStudio Server Pro? So doing so allows you to provide a one-stop portal for all of your data science needs. So there's no need to manage multiple portals and frameworks for your users um, to log in uh, and just to do their jobs. You also get all the auth and authorization benefits that you get from RStudio sessions with Jupyter now. Um, and that's a huge boon for administrators. It's also a better user experience. So right now, if you want your data scientists to use uh, Jupyter, you have to have them connect to it via a terminal, start it through the terminal, and, and you know that's just not a great user experience. So you know integrating it in with RStudio Server Pro allows them to you know launch it just like an R session and uh, get access to Jupyter at the touch of their fingertips. And finally, if you integrate Jupyter with RStudio Server Pro, it becomes very easy to publish Jupyter Notebooks to connect, um, which gives you a great sharing ecosystem that we've built uh, with R, but also with Python. So I just want to quickly, very basic talk about architecture, just so you can kind of understand how, how this all works. Um, so, you know, today we have RStudio Server Pro and uh, now it talks to the launcher, which uh, Jonathan talked about in the last talk. Um, I, I won't talk about the launcher in depth here, but basically it allows you to launch your uh, R sessions and your Python Jupyter sessions uh, potentially in the cloud via Kubernetes or Slurm, or also locally as well on the local server. But the key takeaway here is that Jupyter sessions require the use of the launcher, which is a new feature in 1.2. And uh, R and Jupyter sessions are peers of each other, so they're treated very much the same way. Uh, and I'll, I'll kind of explain what that means uh, when I do my demo. So to talk about how to use, um, how to use it, um, so again, you need the job launcher. Um, so I won't go into detail there. Uh, there's plenty of documentation online that you can find about that. Uh, but once you have that enabled, all you really have to do to turn on Jupyter sessions is to flip some switches and, and set a binary path. It's, it's very simple. So a sample configuration file just to enable Jupyter is this. You just set the binary path for Jupyter and then turn on labs, uh, Jupyter labs for the Jupyter labs interface, or notebooks for the Jupyter notebooks interface. And you can have both of those at the same time. So I'm going to attempt to show you a demo here. If I can figure out where my desktop is. OK, so this is the RStudio Server Pro homepage. Um, and you know, some of you may be familiar with this, but uh, you know, right now, uh, we can, when we launch a session, what's new is we can choose our editor. 
So, you know, before every time you would start a new session, you only had one option, which was to launch R Studio. But now you have the option to start Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebook. So just real quick to show you what that might look like if I start a Jupyter Lab session, it shows up on the home page. And then I'm loaded into Jupyter Lab very seamlessly. And then you can interact with Jupyter just like you would regular, regularly connecting to Jupyter. You have access to multiple uh, documents at the same time uh, and that sort of thing. So nothing revolutionary, but it, it is great that you can access that through the home page of RStudio Server Pro. Now, I'll just quickly show you a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, I want to show you how easy it is to publish a Jupyter Notebook to connect. So if I, I started a new uh, Jupyter Notebook session, and then let's create a new Python Notebook. So I'll just print some Python code here. And then you'll see that in the Jupyter Notebook, it's a little hard to see, let's make it bigger. There's this button here that allows us to publish to connect. So if we click that, it becomes very easy to publish it. All I have to do is click publish. And then it shows up on RStudio Connect. So this is the new notebook that I just created. And then there it is. Very simple. So I just want to quickly talk about best practices for um, administering uh, Jupyter with RStudio Server Pro. Uh, I recommend that you use the default configuration wherever possible because you know we've put a lot of work into making uh, the configuration defaults just work out of the box um, with very sane defaults that you shouldn't need to be tweaking. But uh, two uh, settings that you may actually want to tweak are related to uh, session suspension um, and cleaning up automatic automatically cleaning up sessions that were forgotten about. Um, so similar to what we have today uh, for our sessions like uh, Suspend, we, we provide for Jupyter as well. And then uh, when you're mounting your NFS directory, uh, you need to mount NFS directories so that you know, users have access to their notebooks. And if you're doing that with NFS v3, we recommend using local lock equals all uh, as a mount option or just using NFS v4. Otherwise, you could run into some problems there. And then if you're going to be using this with Kubernetes, we recommend that you use the R session complete uh, R Studio Docker image. So this is basically a Docker image that we published to Docker Hub that has all the R Studio binaries that you need to launch Jupyter. And then it, you know, it has Jupyter itself and uh, like a, an installation of Python. And then you can create derivative images from that to provide your users with whatever you need uh, in terms of Python versions. So there are two plugins that we provide for Jupyter to kind of help with the uh, user experience. These are totally optional, but I recommend that you have both of these installed. The first plugin is the RS Connect Jupyter plugin, which is what actually allowed us to uh, publish the notebook to Jupyter. And then the other one is the RSP plugin, which shows notebooks on the home page. So just to remind you what that looks like, at the top you see the Connect Publishing button. Uh, and then at the bottom on the home page, you'll see your recently used notebooks on the home page as well. So in some rare cases, you know, Jupyter won't start right up out of the box. We've tried to make it as easy as possible, but there may come a time where you, know, you, you see that your Jupyter sessions won't start for whatever reason. So if you need help troubleshooting those issues, the first thing I would recommend to do is uh, run the verify installation command. And this is documented in the RStudio Server Pro admin guide. Um, it's very, very easy to use. You just run it, and it, it gives you uh, information about why your job couldn't start. Um, so hopefully, you can use that information to fix whatever's going wrong. And if you need further help, just reach out to support. As far as next steps go, if you're interested in uh, integrating uh, Jupyter with the RStudio Server Pro, please go to uh, the, the website on screen, uh, solutions.rstudio.com, and we have a, a great primer to help you set this up. And that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. We have a, a number of different questions that we can go ahead and, and work through. 
Um, one of the questions was, are all Jupyter kernels supported, Python, R, Julia, et cetera, are those available? Uh, we've just focused on the Python kernel uh, for now. The, the one thing that I will mention is it's just Jupyter. So anything you can do in Jupyter, you can do here. Um, let's see, there's another one. How does Jupyter handle ODBC connections to databases? Is there anything specific to RStudio Connect done there, or specific to RStudio Server Pro done there? Uh, there's nothing specific done uh, for ODBC. It should just be complete pass, pass through for whatever you have set up with Jupyter. Another question, why not enable Jupyter by default on RStudio 1.3? Uh, I guess uh, that means uh, why is it not in the open source version or? I'm not quite sure so with the, if there's additional detail or there. Or why is it just not enabled? Um, because. Uh, to enable it, you have to actually have it set up and configured and installed. So basically, we don't want to forcefully turn that on if it doesn't actually, you know, if it hasn't been set up. Are there any tools for admins to be able to kill and manage Jupyter sessions? So it's really easy to kill Jupyter sessions from the home page, like regular R sessions. Uh, so uh, users can self administer that sort of thing. And they can also, Admins can see Jupyter sessions from the RStudio Server Pro admin uh, page. So if they need to kill sessions, they can do that very easily. Uh, will the Jupyter integration be available in the RStudio desktop IDE in the future? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, Great. perhaps. <laughs> Great. Thanks again, Carl. All right.